You are welcome to Church on the Air. And we are taking a special session on the state of our nation and the nations of the world with Nigeria as a case study. And we are saying that there is currently a war of words. If you listen to the social media, you hear a lot of things, insecurity and all that. We are saying that the war drums must not beat. We are to tear the war drums. And we are bringing a gentle, subtle reminder to us because we have been praying. People are praying. There are intercessors all over the land praying. But God is saying that while we are watching and praying, we must also remind ourselves of the dangers. Should we continue? Should we insist on continuing in the current paths we are on? And in bringing such gentle reminders, we are looking at in the time past, what had happened? In this clip, we want to look at the Syria loan civil war. The Syria loan civil war. It started on the 23rd of March, 1991. <laughs> on the 23rd of March, 1991, and ended on 18th June, 2002. Not too long ago, on the 23rd of March, 1991 to January 2002, Syria alone had her civil war. Fonde Sanko, who led the revolutionary United Front with support from the special forces of Charles Taylor of the National Patriotic Front of Liberia instigated the war in an attempt to, to overthrow, the word is overthrow, to overthrow the then government of Joseph Momo. And what was the slogan? <laughs> Very interesting. The slogan of the Revolutionary United Front is, no more slaves, no more masters, power and wealth to the people. Does this sound familiar? No more slaves, no more masters, power and wealth to the people. And that brings us to the fact that it simply means there's a dissatisfaction. Like we'd always say, government cannot please everybody. Government cannot please everybody. But when the generality of the people are not satisfied, and when we have war of words as we have now on the social media, when there's gross insecurity everywhere, and people are tempted to begin to think of how they, they will defend and can defend themselves, then that country is beginning to beat the war drums. And we are saying that in Nigeria and in any part of the nation of the world that you are in, let's tear the war drums. Let's not allow them to beat because it's an evil wind that blows no man no good. <laughs> some evil wind, like I used to say, some responding to some challenges that I face, I said, <laughs> The devil is blaming an evil wind that will do me good. <laughs> the devil is blaming an evil wind that will do me good. But we are saying that war is. And any time, any day, we continue to be a war that blows no man, no good, but evil. I was amazed one day when Al Jazeera had a documentary. They were announcing the documentary, and I kept thinking. I, I had to make time to look at that video because that clip of the investigative of the investigation by Al Jazeera and the topic they were announcing was who gains from the war in the Middle East? Who gains? Where can somebody be gaining from the war? 
And it's just, it is just like Pope Francis said when he went to America and he was addressing the joint house of their democracy. He said to them, he said, you don't need to be sending food aid. You don't need to be sending a, a humanitarian support. You don't need to be sending all those uh, development support and you know if you can stop your weapons of mass destruction. In essence, if there is no war, the people will do well. The people will thrive. They don't need to leave their countries to come to your country because they will do well. But when you produce weapons of mass destruction and you sell it and they use it, then you continue to give aid and stipends and all that. And we are saying that in our nation, Nigeria, we don't need anybody to throw biscuit at us. In our nation, Nigeria, we reject and refuse to be refugees. We refuse to be stranded. We refuse to be homeless. We refuse for them to be sending us blankets or for us to run to any of the other African states where we are the giant of Africa, for God's sake, the giant of Africa. And it is not by mouth. We have all it takes. We have all the resources. We have the intellect. <laughs> Even the other city. <laughs> I brought it and said that if you see somebody slap a policeman, <laughs> don't go for now. Nigerian be that. We get the muzzle. <laughs> we get the muzzle. Even in the current American uh, uh, government, three Nigerians are there. We are everywhere. Super brains. But why are we not using our brains for things that are constructive? Why do we want to now use it to scatter our nation? No. The brains is for the good of all, not for the oppression of any, not for the suppression of any, not for the marginalization of any. We see here, Syria alone had their civil war with the slogan, no more slaves, no more masters, power and wealth to the people. When, you are, when there's marginalization, the people see themselves as slaves. And they say, no, we are not anybody's slave. We didn't come to... <laughs> there's this song by Sonia Ade that made great impact to me. Growing up, I never really liked... I was not born again, but I didn't like all these uh, songs that didn't make meaning. I like jazz a lot. But it's been years I didn't play jazz. I like jazz a lot. Jazz was my number one music growing up. All those other songs that don't make sense, that my mates like, I didn't like them. And I like philosophical songs. Then, Sonny, uh, not Sonia, the Ebenezer Obey, a Nigerian artist, now a pastor, was also one of my favorite. I loved his songs because they made meaning, they had sense on them. Sonia, Ade, only that one song I like that said, ah, sing on why that sentence. He said, ah. He was praising some people, praising some people, and said, ah, he, more, he didn't escort anybody to the world. <laughs> he came to make impact. <laughs> it's like when we first came to Abuja. <laughs> I said, me, I didn't come to look at Sumarok. <laughs> I didn't come to look at Sumarok. No, I came to make it. In Abuja, Nigeria, we'll make it. We will excel. We will make it. We will excel. So Sumarok, I didn't come sightseeing. I'll always say that. So you see? We must not allow that slogan to play. The slogan that says we are no more slaves. No. And we don't want any masters. Power and wealth to the people. We should not allow it. If we stick to the Constitution and we allow the Constitution to be our guiding principle and we do the basic, do unto others as you want others to do unto you, then our nation will be a better place to be in. Our country will be an envy of the nation, nations of the world, just as China, Singapore, India, I'll always name all these countries because we were together growing up when we did history. They were telling us third world country, third world country. That's why history must not be expunged from our, our educational system. It must come back because it helps us to know where we are coming from, where we are at, and where we are going. And so, Father, we want to say thank you because Jeremiah 29, 11 reminds us again that your thoughts for us are thoughts of good and not of evil. You love us and you care for us. And what you want for us 
is that we excel, be in good health, bless you, praise you, magnify you. Psalm 1032, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. We are in a land flowing with milk and honey. Nigeria is a land flowing with milk and honey. We have all the weather and we have all that it takes to bring about goodness and good fruit. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Philippians 4, 6, as we bring this segment to a close. Philippians 4, 6 says, be careful for nothing. God is saying, let us be careful. Let us be careful. And especially in this case, in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let our requests be made known unto God. We are making our requests. We have been making our requests. But God is saying we have not shown enough gratitude. If we have, we would have tread more carefully. If we are showing gratitude to him that has kept us, helped us, caused us to triumph, we would do well and take heed to ourselves. And so, Father, I want to say thank you for your word that has gone forth. We have brought a gentle, gentle reminder to us on the state of our nation using Sierra Leonean war as a point of reference that we must not go that way. We are to learn from it. They went to war because they said they didn't want to be no more slaves, no more masters, and they were asking for power and wealth to the people. We ask that you help us to draw strength from this, to learn from this, and to make our ways right in Jesus' name. Bless our nation, Nigeria. Bless the nations of the world. And bless the good people and good citizens of our nation, even as you continue to help our government to do that which is right in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May his countenance of favor and of mercy never leave us all. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It is well. It is well. It is well in the name of Jesus. It is well with us all today, with you and I. It is well. It is well with our nation. It is well in the name of Jesus. It is well with our country today. It is well with us all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for listening. In. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May his countenance of favor and of mercy never leave our nation, the nations of the world, the good people and good citizens of Nigeria in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We'll be back just one minute with another clip. God bless you.